Hello again and welcome to The Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Please always look in the drop down menu because you can find where the main blog is. The URL is www.the-masters-voice.com. You can always find a small synopsis about what each video you're watching is about. And you're welcome to also use the playlists on the master's voice that will help you navigate a lot of material quickly because the material is arranged by theme. And if you simply listen to a few videos in each theme, you might find it easier for you to catch up with where I am. I've stated, uh, I think it was last month that the Lord had given me instructions and told me that there's no need to keep hand holding because the majority of the messages are not landing. And I will continue to say what he says, despite the fact that there's a very small contingent that's listening. I always tell people to try and occupy the kind of mind that Jesus occupies. Ask the Lord to give you the mind of Christ. When you have the mind of Christ, you will not perceive things according to your own limited fashion, which is thinking that a few of us gathered here means that there's a mighty revival going on. You have to have an eternal perspective. This world is filled with billions of people who do not know these matters, who even if they came to these matters, even if they found this channel tomorrow, these things are not easy to grasp and absorb. And so for us to be ignorant of that fact and think that there's just a little Holy Ghost party going on here, you know, uh, what my pastor used to call just me, my four and no more, is a very irresponsible way of looking at things because there are millions and millions and millions and billions of souls in the balance. People who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, people who have very tilted theology and therefore are in no way prepared to absorb the things that are happening here. So you are thinking of a very large contingent of people, if you're listening to what I'm saying, who are utterly unprepared to receive this and then an even larger contingent of people who have sworn by all means that they will not receive this. And so you're looking at at least two massive populated groups that when these things come to pass, will be throwing their toys, will be paralyzed, and will be taking out a lot of negative emotion on whoever is nearby. And in the case of most Christians, you will be the one that's nearby because you already live with your unbelieving family member. You already live in the contingent of friends that you have who refuse to listen when you share the videos and who refuse to pay attention and who says that God will never speak like this and God could never do these things, which is curious because half the things I read here are directly out of the Bible. So clearly God must speak like this because he spoke like this in times past to Jeremiah, for instance, where a lot of the material that I'm sharing comes from. And he spoke like this to Ezekiel. So that means that there is a massive deficit between those people who have passed on, who knew how God sounded, and the new final group that are here, who listen to another God, the one I call another Jesus, the false head of the false church. So this is one of the older prophecies that I have. This is the one where the Lord revealed for, to me that Russia is actually hidden in America, that they are here on the soil, on the landmass. This prophecy is July 25th, 2015. And it was from this prophecy that I wrote an email and I shared it to many people in 2015 who were close to me. I shared it to about 50 people. The title of the, e um, the email, the title of the message is called The Fall of America, July 25th, 2015. And the banner scripture is this, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Revelation 18 and verse four. And this is just a command that we find in the end times script, the end times outworking, where there was a loud command given to all souls in Mystery Babylon to separate themselves from her. And so the first step of separation will also already be separating yourself from the iniquity of the country, not by disavowing that the country has iniquity, but by setting up a fence, a gate 
a royal standard in your life that no matter what America does, whether she transes herself or homosexuals herself, that you are not going to participate in that. You're not going to participate in it by endorsing it. You're not going to participate in it by practicing it. You are going to hear the, the voice of God, no matter what state you may be in right now. And you are going to say, by the power of the Holy Spirit vested in me as a child of God, no matter what lifestyle I'm currently carrying on with, I am now about to make my exit out of the perversion and the sins of Babylon. It doesn't actually mean that I'm going to hold up myself at home and I'm going to cut off all contact with other people. I'm going to delete my phone book. And no, that is not what God calls us. God tells us in the book of Matthew that we are the salt and we are what all men will have available to taste godliness. He calls us the light of the world. You are the light of the world. He tells us that no one would light a lamp and then put it under a basket. He says that we are a city on a hill. And so it is problematic when you are a Christian and you are not able to speak about your faith to others. You are not able to give any sensible answers for what you believe. You are not able to have civil conversations with others, at least those who are not so far gone that they're, um, they're just people that you can't talk to. There are some people like that. But to come out of Mystery Babylon, the first step is actually to separate from America's sinful nature in your heart. It doesn't mean that you're not going to tell your boss, I need a cubicle in the basement so that I can remain pure. So many people like, like, are like that. They do not want to mix. They do not want to mingle. They are not even in any fellowship or in any church because they're like, oh no, they will corrupt me, not knowing that every person carries corruption. And if you are out of fellowship, you will become dull and blunt because iron sharpens iron and one iron by itself sharpens nothing. And so... Oh yes, coming out of her will eventually progress to where there will be diaspora from this nation, willing diaspora first, where people will move. And so in this prophecy, the Lord declared that the day of America's destruction had come, which gives us insight into how God works. God is saying this stuff all the way back in 2015. My daughter, this is the day of their destruction that I declare to you. And where are we now? A whole chunk of years, nearly 10 years after the fact, so it is strange when people say that God is not merciful and yet God has been speaking the truth to at least this servant for years, for a period of 11 years. I have been writing down this, these prophecies. This is the 11th year since 2012. And God has not moved to seize America and break any part of her yet. All that is happening is the small crumblings that he has already said will lead to the eventual collapse of the entire cliffside an empire will fall. But the Lord woke me up very early that day and he told me that when I read Ezekiel 6, 9, and that portion of scripture is talking about six men, that six men were called and five of the men, it turned out, were called for judgment and their instruction from God was to take up their ax and to go throughout the entire city and cut down the young and the old, the maiden and the mother and the nursing child and for their eye not to spare, meaning don't have mercy based on the fact that, oh, this person is old or this person is a child. He said, cut them down utterly. And the only people you will show mercy to are the people that I have placed a special mark on their forehead. And that is because these people repent. These people are lamenting over the sins of their nation. So these ones who are highly regretful that such things were done in the nation. And these ones who cry out to God for mercy and they are sorrowing over the fact that this is a nation that does this, this is a nation that does that. Those were the only people that the Lord told um, the men of judgment to have mercy on. So there were five men for judgment and only one man who was given a special marker and told, go and mark the foreheads, go first throughout the city and mark the foreheads of those who have separated themselves from the sin. And so he said, when you read Ezekiel 9, for the purposes of this prophecy, those six men represent thousands of troops. He called them innumerable thousands, meaning that these are thousands that cannot be counted. That he said, will descend through the Rocky and the Appalachian Mountains and strike America with amazing, deadly precision. And the Lord said that this attack will be on the news 
and he had said it several times already, several times before I finally got this formal prophecy to write down in 2015. Every eye will see it on the news and wonder only one thing. How on earth did they enter the country in such large numbers without America knowing it? And how did they mask their movement so well that America did not detect such mass troop movements on any radar? Were they simply not looking or watching? It is a devastating day. Babylon has fallen and great is the smoke of her burning. And so here the Lord is speaking and saying that this will be newsworthy news. And I have already shared because as the years go by, the Lord greatly opens up and magnifies the prophecies. So when I was younger, he would just say a few things. This is not a very long prophecy at all. And I hope to be able to handle it um, succinctly. And then we move on. But as the years have gone by, God will then expand the prophecy and he will keep doing what the prophet Isaiah called adding layer for layer and line upon line, building a greater and a deeper understanding of what will happen so that we cannot say that we did not know and we were not told. So troop movements in the mountains, the Rocky and the Appalachians coming down to strike America with amazing deadly precision, something that will make the news. And when the foreigners see it, the foreigners will just be wondering how on earth did all these soldiers get into this country without America knowing it? Where is America's spy weaponry? Where is America drone, watchful drones in the sky? Where's the eye in the sky? Where are the troops on the ground? Where are the special forces and where are the secret ops guys? How can they not know that thousands and thousands of people are flooding down from the mountain areas? And why, did, why is all this movement of large numbers of troops not captured on the radar? Was America just not being watchful? But the truth that we now know is that whatever it is that America watches with will be disabled. So I, I'm not sure what they watch with. I'm not sure if there's, you know, what they would use to see mass movements of troops. What God has said is talked about, for instance, Russia in the air and able to fly on reconnaissance missions and that their planes have something whereby if they don't want to trigger the radar that lets the United States know that there's actually a foreign air, there's a foreign aircraft in your airspace, then it won't be known. And the same for the water. So the, the message here is, the scripture is, therefore her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. And this is Revelation 18, verse 8. So I've always said that in order for you to follow these prophecies, you must be conversant with Revelation 18. The problem for a lot of people is that they staunchly refuse that America is mystery Babylon. And once you take out this key portion of scripture, how God is going to judge, the one that he says is a defiled cup that has made all the nations drunk, that's one indictment, a defiled cup that has made all the nations run mad. That is a second indictment, a defiled cup that has defiled all the nations, meaning that they practice the same abominations that they have watched her practice on TV, the same abominations that she has flown to their countries or given them a controlling call from Washington and told them over the years, you must legalize this and you must do this. That defiling cup has defiled the nations. So that is the third indictment. And God says for that, the plagues of mystery Babylon will come in the same day. But if you deny that America is mystery Babylon and you want to pin it on the Roman Catholic Church and you want to pin it on Iraq or the Persian Gulf or wherever it is, then it will be impossible for you to marry these precise prophecies that God is giving to the precise judgments in Revelation 18, because in Revelation 18, it says that Mystery Babylon will be burned so thoroughly that the smoke of her burning will rise to the heavens. And then one of the prophecies God has given me, he has said that America will be bombed so thoroughly and that he will also send a contingent of rocks here that will be on fire and strike the country so bad that the smoke of America will rise until it can be seen from Google Maps. It will be able to be seen by whatever that software is that looks at all the countries from far off and sees them. 
So there's congruence in what is handled here and what Revelation 18 says. But once you throw Revelation 18 out and says it's not America, then it is very easy for you to then say these prophecies also are not true. And so I said to the Lord, what exactly are you saying, Lord? What do you mean, six men and all that? Please, Lord, what are you saying? And the response I got was for him to flash me an image of soldiers in full commando gear standing on the streets. And I have already shared that this was one of the first visions that I got from the Lord towards the latter half of 2013, that it was either a dream or a vision, I can't remember which, but that I saw Russians in full gear here in the street and they were swarming everywhere and they were killing people indiscriminately. It didn't matter if you were a woman or a child or anything, they were simply cutting people down. And God says that the nations of the world will receive a very crystallized reality when they see how America will fall and they will flee in their millions out of this place without regard for whatever property or riches they leave behind. And I covered those things in 2022 when I said that there's going to be a, a separate diaspora of foreigners that foreigners are going to realize that signing up for the American dream does not mean signing up to die with America in her problems. And they're going to disengage. They're going to take their skills. They're going to take their assets. They're going to take their savings. They're going to take their availability to do the kind of jobs that America both needs and the kind of jobs that America does not want to do. So this is essential skills in the medical department, manufacturing, wherever else you find a lot of foreigners congregated like IT, for instance, and also they're going to leave. They're going to take their wealth, their investments, their children, their everything. And America is going to go into a very real economic slump because once people disengage and they go out with their funds and they go out with their assets, there's going to be a material shift in how the country operates, in who's available to do the work. And we will feel it. So it will be a crystallized reality for other countries and they will flee from this nation and God says that's exactly how the nations will abandon America. They will run away without care for whatever valuables they have to leave behind and taking only their lives, they will fill the airports in panic as for the first time, God says, we will see people, we will see the nations of the world, the nations means the different peoples, fleeing from a developed nation as they have done in the past when undeveloped nations undergo a setback or a terrorist threat or sometimes political collapse. So it is very rare that you see people running away from Western nations. There's, there's no reason for panic and there's no reason for fear in Western nations. They're stable. They have stable and well-established democracies. They are also the ones that basically set the tone for the whole world. And so people aspire to go into these nations and you very rarely see people coming out. But God says for the first time, we will see people fleeing from a first world country the same way they flee from war or terrorist threats or political collapse in nations that are not considered first world. And Jeremiah 51 and 45 but bears this up. The verse that the Lord gave me was, Come out of her midst, my people, each of you, save yourselves from the fierce anger of the Lord. So as you listen to these prophecies, you, you cannot mistake the fact that God is in judgment mode when he says these things, regardless of when they actually come to pass. People are always asking me, well, when is this? And the question I always ask back is, what are you going to do about it if you had a date to put on Google Calendar? What are you going to do about it? The heart behind asking when this is, is usually you just want to know how much time you have either to get ready or how much time you have to continue with the lifestyle that you currently are pursuing, which means that when you hear these prophecies, you are not being moved perhaps in the right direction, which is to go straight to prayer, to go straight to the Holy Spirit, to go straight into deeper relationship with the Father so that you can find out not when they are, but how you are going to traverse and travel these things. I continue with the Lord's words. All the major international news networks will cover the story of the century. Only the foreigners will be able to leave. U.S. citizens will be prevented from leaving. 
This includes all foreign nationals who have taken oaths of citizenship to America. They will be counted as natural born citizens, as well as all naturalized dwellers who do not currently hold a current passport for their original country. God was even speaking here at the time that banks will not be functional. This is all the way back in 2015, saying that banks will be shut down and they will be giving out very little money at this time. It will turn into a complete martial law search and seizure. So um, in the prophecy underwater, that was given, I will not guess, but I think that was July 2022. God said even back then that, there's coming a time when Americans will soon not be able to get money out of the banks. And now here we are a few years later, and we can certainly see that this financial crisis thing that I have been sharing about since 2018, talking about the US dollar losing value, that value will drop to up to 60% lost off the viability of the dollar. God is speaking about this even back then, saying that normal processes will not be working. And what I've seen at least in this Russian occupation time, is that Americans should get used to two things that will be helpful. One of those is having very little available, as in very little, as in when I see this occupation, when I have seen it while asleep, or when the Lord has just been teaching me about it, it will be a time of unbelievable shortages to this country. So the very least that can be made available for food, the very least that can be made available for clothing, as in you will not get to wear as many warm things as you want. So winter will not be comfortable. Winter will not be catered to at our choice, the way we currently cater for it. So he says that there will be emergency measured in affected states and FEMA protection measures, but it will spread to the entire country. And so here is one of the things that I have spoken about, which is that FEMA is going to play an increased role in the United States. FEMA is going to have almost godlike powers because they will be afforded, due to the natural disasters that will come, they will be afforded a lot of oversight and they will be given a lot of room to, to operate as they want, not necessary as they have been legislated, not necessary within the limitations that currently exist for them, they will be given what is known as emergency powers to do the kinds of things that they want to do. And so all the way back here in 2015, here's what the Lord said. These six men will be Russian troops aided by three other nations. And here is what I wrote. He did not tell me who they were. So in the beginning, I had no knowledge that Russia would be working with China. In the beginning, the Lord did not reveal that to me. He just showed that Russia will be the spearhead of what happens to America when it comes to invasion. But as the years have progressed, the nations that have been added on to help the Russians will be China as a chief partner. God said that China is going to be in charge of logistics. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if that means bringing trucks and planes and things like that for war. But the people who know war know what military logistics are. So perhaps they could share that. So China will be a chief partner in terms of logistics and weapons. This is in the prophecy, send for their flesh, where God showed that China is going to be bringing some quite unbelievable weapons. Uh, he says that what these two countries have in, in the area of weapons, we have not seen before. And he finally gave me leave after so many years to share about this gun that I said I saw that China has, and the gun shoots fire, but it's not exactly fire like fire as we know it. It's almost like a lightsaber. It's almost like a plasma thing. It can shoot fire, but it can also shoot what is like a beam. And when that beam hits a body part, the body part, he said, the molecules of the flesh become excited so much that they just disintegrate. So the person's arm just became like melted candle wax and it just, 
hit them here and it just melted and dropped off. And then I saw that the person holding the gun moved it in a motion like this. And then it cuts a person across like this. And this part of the person slid off the way you could slice meat. And it was a horrific thing to see in a vision. You know, when you're just paralyzed and you can't even say anything and you're just looking at how a person can just be ended in such a sudden motion. And what the Lord says is that the wars of the future will be fought with what has never been seen before. And he said, the kind of cruelty that we will see in the end times wars, the, what the nations will be bringing out to fight with, he called it man's inhumanity to man. And one of the things I mentioned is that end times wars are going to involve these hybrid beings, people who are not people, people who are blended with wolf or blended with shark or blended with dog. And they are going to be excessively cruel and super strong. And also human beings will be given all kinds of things. And the Lord said that these are the super soldiers of the future and that they are extremely expensive to procure. So they, I guess they're like, a mercenary or a type of privatized weapon. And he says that the governments very much want them, but they're very expensive to procure. And so the nations will be Russia and China and Ukraine and Taiwan and Korea, not North Korea. It will be a united Korea. The Lord brought uh, in a prophetic message in 2022 that we will see the uniting of North and South Korea, which greatly shocked me because those two nations have been separated and bickering and squabbling with each other and maintaining a very strict separation for upward of 70 years. But he says that brother will embrace brother and they will put their, put their differences aside and they will come here as part of what he calls the kings of the East the kings of the east coming from that side. And also surprisingly, Japan will be part of the destruction of the United States. And Japan is very much a top US ally now, but that is not going to be the case in the future. And the Lord says that for what is about to happen here, there's culpability from the top. He said that the leaders of America are complicit in the series of events that will bring America to its knees. They know about it. They are informed. They're taking measures to protect themselves in safe houses and rooms beneath the earth. I can see them going in an orderly fashion into underground rooms. And so this is the declaration that the Lord was making to me, that the leaders of the United States are complicit in her fall. And I've always said that when you're listening to prophecy and you just want to be stuck in your 2020 divisions of red and blue, then you're missing the whole point. Because America has been in a very lengthy period of being sold to outward forces for longer than my lifetime and most of the people who are watching this channel. This has been a slow boil. The thing that is called, we have an opportunity to create a new world order did not stop start with Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden. So if people are going to be myopic and limited in their thinking and just think it's red and blue now, I can help you because God says that they are different wings on the back of the same bird. And that is in the prophecy where God was saying that the media will help to destroy America. And that there's no such thing as red media and blue media. It is just two wings playing a game of trickery and deception. They are joined to one bird that is committed to seeing this nation brought to her knees. And why? Because she is the last impediment to the rise of the beast system. She is the last nation that is clinging to her guns and the last nation that is always talking about her civil rights and her personal rights and her constitutional rights. And in order for the beast system to finally stretch itself and stand up and say, hello, I am the beast, this nation and its opposition and its laws that keep it as a certain type of nation needs to be brought down to its knees and destroyed. And then the beast can stand. And so the leaders that he's talking about are decades of administration. Each administration has come and played its part. And some have played the role of good cop and some have played the role of bad cop, but they are all meeting at the back and laughing and saying, well done, pass the baton, pass the red, white, and blue baton. And now for the next four years, we run. And sometimes the trickery has been so successful that that administration has been allowed to continue for another four. And as you have heard certain Americans say, they wished that the blue administration that was headed 
by the man of sin, President Barack Obama could have had a third run with the baton, but not to worry. He will take that baton and bring himself back anyway. And so the Lord says that they know about it. They have been working in concert. They are well informed of Russia's intentions and they are helping it along while at the same time taking measures to keep themselves in safe houses and rooms beneath the earth. And then when the Lord said rooms, the scripture that came to my heart is when Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many rooms. That's what he said. But the actual word is a huge, huge structure that some Bible translations call mansions. So when the Lord was saying there are rooms under the earth, what I saw are these huge, luxurious and comfortable, several layers deep, fortified bunkers under the earth. These places are huge. They are luxurious and comfortable. They are built many layers deep. They are fortified with steel in the walls and they have beams as thick as you would find in the building of major architectural projects like bridges and tunnels. In other words, there is a lot of cement invested under the ground and there the wealthy and the powerful are making plans whenever there's some kind of distress signal or some kind of code that they have already put in movies to show people if you have seen these kinds of movies to show people that they will send out distress signals and distress codes to those who are in the club. And then they will go underneath into these well-protected, well-fortified, thick beamed mansions or homes that are built underneath the ground. And the Lord said that the lies of this country are mounted as high as the skyscrapers in your major cities. And the complicit ones are handing over the nation to what they believe is a higher power. So if you are new to the idea that Satanism is actually official, the official religion of the United States, you are welcome to the truth. And then I saw what I just described, a baton, a red, white, and blue baton. This baton is the secret of America. And that secret is, the knowledge of coming destruction is not a new thing. This baton of planned destruction has been passed down for many, many years. It is the secret that is hidden in the crown of Lady Liberty. It has been passed down from administration to administration. Each administration runs its race and then it retires having done its duty to the crown and the baton. America, I hear the Lord says, say, you are weakened from within. You are not your own. You have been sold long ago. And so in recent videos, I have been talking about, once again, the presence of Russia in the country. I've just handled it here at the beginning of this prophecy that Russia is presence in the country. But the Lord has also said that intensely disloyal, wicked, unpatriotic Americans will greatly contribute to the destruction of this country. So imagine when God doesn't say, oh no, it's this group or it's that lobbying group. He says that it's the leadership of the nation progressively over time that have sold her to become a captive so that they can bring in what they want. You have been sold long ago. And then the last thing he was talking about is danger for naturalized children. Tell them to be watchful and careful of their children because during search and seizure procedures, children who are born citizens and naturalized children will be taken away from their parents. And I was seeing in brief flashes of pictures, many families, especially families of foreign origin in bitter struggles with the police at airports and the borders screaming and crying and pleading for the return of their children. And this is something that's already happening with the people that are coming across the border, but that is a different matter from what God was showing me here. And I saw that children were being taken away as quotation marks, property of the government of the United States. And the spirit of the Lord, as I was watching this was saying, search and seizure, search and seizure. I go on. 
Nations will celebrate at the burning of Babylon, at the smoke of Babylon's burning. But God says this is not something to celebrate. He says this is something to fear. Because when you see calamity and strife falling on a great nation like America in a single day, then you know that calamity and strife for all other nations are not far behind. And God says that other nations should see America as an example. They should see their coming demise and their judgment in the fate of Babylon the Great. This is the time to lift prayers for the American people. So this is those who have ears, those who have heeded what God has been saying, time to go into a, a time of prayer, a time of seeking God in order to be able to control whatever it is that may be on the heart and worries and fears and to find courage and comfort, even comfort in the Lord. It is time to pray in order to mitigate excessive harm and loss of life. These attacks will take the lives of, son, of some, but there are greater atrocities on the way that will take more than those who die in first strikes. And so um, you can always go back to the blog and read the rest of the prophecy. I always leave it under in the description box for those who want to do that extra layer of discernment, that extra layer of being a Berean to go back and check. It is not a new thing here to hear that Russia will come against this nation. This is God's final judgment of this country. And so thank you for being with me. And I am Celestial. This is the Master's Voice. And until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.